Hello map posts and other animation enthusiasts! I'm gonna take a moment to discuss something that's been on my mind for the last few months. Designing characters for animation. So, I think a lot of us, so long as you're an animator, have been in this situation before. You're watching a video for a map call and you're really into the idea, script, song, art direction, all that jazz. But then you take a look at the character refs and... Oh dear... Oh no... Ain't nobody got time for that! So, here are some helpful tips and tricks I've picked up over the years for designing some animation-friendly designs that will help keep you and your animators happy, healthy, and most importantly, sane. Because a happy animator is an animator that is less likely to want to scoop out your insides with a dull spoon because somebody went a little overboard with the stripes. One, don't just rely on markings to communicate who the character is. Okay, I know this one can be tough because a lot of young artists struggle with same face syndrome and it takes a lot of practice to really get comfortable with designing broad characters. But if this is a step you think you're ready to take and you think your animators can handle it, please go for it. It's going to help so much in the long run for making sure every character looks distinct without having anything to do with color. It's all about shapes. Making sure your animators stick to these shapes will make the characters much easier to read and easier to animate. Two, boil down the essence of the character to their most distinguishing characteristics. This is going to be easier to just show versus tell. Let's take my tawny pelt design, one of my more needlessly complicated designs. Now, while I love this design as a still image, I would never ask animators to animate her like this because a, no one would, and B, I like living. So let's simplify this design by boiling it down to what I feel is the bare minimum. There, we've gotten rid of a lot of her extra spots and done away with stripes. This design is much simpler, but it still reads as tawny pelt. I would also probably add a few stripes back in for some flavor, but I'll keep the stripes off of her face since in most animations, the face is going to be the area that the animator has to redraw the most, so the less complicated, the better. Now there's still problems with this design when it comes to animation, but this has already taken it a long way to make it more animation friendly. Three, get rid of floating shapes. This is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to animating characters. If you are asking other people to animate your designs, Please be considerate about their time and get rid of floating shapes. Floating shapes can be anything from stripes, spots, freckles, scars, you name it, that just sit there in a weird spot and you just can't connect them to anything. These shapes will more likely than not be a headache to your animators and float around all over the place unless your animators spend an ungodly amount of time polishing their animation to make sure these floating abominations don't actually go drifting through space. If you have a character with stripes or scars, connect them to the body in an easy to understand and replicate way. Connect that shape to an easy to identify point on the character that no animator could miss. Even if every animator uses their own style, there's no miscommunication when your ref sheet shows clear design choices. Spots might seem like a no-go with this method, but don't fear. There are still ways to make spots animation friendly. Keep them in easy to identify positions, like near the eye, muzzle, or feet. And please keep them sparing. It's okay to have a spot or two, but try your best not to go overboard. Does a character have freckles? Make those freckles an easy to replicate pattern that the animator can copy and paste between most frames. It'll save your animators time and look better in the long run. If you have doubts about whether your design is animation friendly, maybe try animating it yourself before putting up the map call. You can be surprised how different a design feels after the 50th drawing or so, and you'll probably learn some good ways to polish it before putting other animators through that headache. In general, having clear, simple ref sheets with clear, detailed instructions will take you far. Be considerate of your fellow animators and go out there and animate some cool projects.